Now the government, I suppose, will spend some amount of time introducing evidence about two individuals, Yvette Wang and William J.E. And I ask you as you hear the evidence the government puts in to pay some and close attention to what roles each one of these people played. The testimony will show that Ms. Wang was the head of operations. She ran the day-to-day -day of each business. She was in charge of hiring. She did the best to hire people. And her hiring practices were the same as yours or mine. She hired people that she met along the way in her business. She hired people through a headhunter when she needed a person or a spot filled. And she was no more or no less committed. And no more or no less demanding than any other chief executive officer that works. William J.E. is another name that the evidence will show. And William J.E. was the finance guy. He's a well-regarded investment banker who had managed the fortune, not just of the Guo family fund, but he had managed the fortunes of many another companies. He had expertise, he had skill, and that is why he was the finance guy. And I've already talked at length about Mr. Guo, who was the ideas man. He came up with the ideas, and he put together the thought, and the vision of what the whistleblower movement that he believed in would look like. So you see, he wasn't alone in the movement. He wasn't moving all on his own. In fact, that's why it was called the whistleblower movement. The point of it was to have others join and participate. So what will the evidence show at the end of the day? The evidence will show that each one of these companies hired and had people working towards the existence of a real business. They believed and Mr. Guo believed. Mr. Guo believed in this movement. So when the government lawyer asks you and tells you to believe that Mr. Guo defrauded the members of this movement, what the government is saying to you is that he intentionally misled supporters to steal money. The same money that they had given to the movement. The movement that he had devoted almost his entire life to. The movement for which he fled China, the movement for which he put up with being followed every day, the movement for which his phones were hacked, the movement for which his wife and his daughter sat in prison for two years, and the movement for which he was not allowed to leave and travel outside the United States, the movement for which he risked his very existence. That's what they're saying he set out to harm. They're saying that he set out to harm the very thing that was almost an extension, a symbiotic extension of who he was. And he did all of that, even though he had a fortune from a family fund that allowed him to live in luxury. What the government is asking you to believe is not just illogical, it defies common sense.